what makes the crypto exchanges successful, yeah, why customers switched from one crypto exchange to another, and what, what is the future of crypto exchanges? And what is the core product? Is it security or user experience or what? And do we need decentralized exchanges or not? This is just to kind of vitalizing questions. It's up to you how you run the discussion. The panel is decentralized. <laughs> Who wants to start? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Vitaly. I'm a U UK executive director at CX.io. We are a UK-based uh, crypto exchange on the market since 2013, so I would say we were kind of one of the pioneers on the market. And uh, before I start answering your question, I'd actually like to support what uh, Jeanette just said on the previous panel regarding the liquidity. Because like... Uh, uh, guys, guys, you're too loud there. Please, please move somewhere, okay? Roma, please uh, help to make calmer. Okay, sorry. No worries. Or, or we should uh, speak louder. No worries, sure. Uh, and um, yeah, so like a lot of guys in this room, they are actually at this event because uh, whether they are planning to do an ICO or uh, they are in the process or they just done it. And uh, the thing is like I approached pretty much like 15 to 20 times a week by different ICOs uh, with a request to order their ticket, uh, their token uh, on CX.io. First of all, I would say that we don't list any ICO tokens. So, uh, yeah, just if, if you are interested in that, just come back to me probably summer, autumn this year. Uh, but what I would say uh, regarding the uh, previous panel on liquidity, it's, it's not actually that liquid, the, the ICO tokens, and it's actually becoming harder and harder to list your token uh, on the exchange. And uh, coming back to your questions regarding the future of the exchanges, uh, what we see on the market right now, and we are actually uh, are in the uh, dialogue with a lot of regulators uh, around the globe, we are, as I said, a UK-based company, and we are in the dialogue with FCA also, uh, what I think will be going on in the nearest uh, like six to 12 months is we're gonna see a lot of regulation coming uh, specifically to the uh, exchange part, uh, exchange uh, business. And we'll see a lot of regulators around the world uh, coming up with the regulation uh, for the exchanges. We've already seen that uh, in terms of KYC and AML. Uh, procedures, but I think we're, we're going to see more regulation in different spheres of the business. So uh, I can add that as well. So, hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Kayamori. I'm the founder CEO of Coin. Um, we operate a centralized exchange. Um, we're the only global exchange that is listed and registered um, in Japan with the Japan FSA. Um, as, as, um, as he mentioned, uh, there's going to be so much more regulation. It's going to happen everywhere, starting from Japan, um, Singapore, Philippines. Um, G20 is going to talk about a joint regulation um, in March. So it's going to happen because this is where cryptocurrency and other cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency and fiat exchange hands. Right? So, it also, there's going to be <clears throat> two distinct paths. One is centralized exchanges that will be regulated under the guidelines of KYC, um, AML, under the OECD or um, FATF. And then there's also going to be decentralized exchanges that don't take on any custody of customer assets and it's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. But that's going to be a challenge if you become large because no government, no tax official will allow an unregulated um, exchange to exist in scale, right? So it's still the Wild West right now, um, but it's happening, it started in Japan, it's happening throughout Asia, and it's gonna be global. So um, that's, that's a trend that's not gonna stop. Yeah. And I would, I would add to that that it's actually already happening in Europe specifically. True, true. Several jurisdictions in Europe already introduced uh, regulation for crypto exchanges, and I now know for sure that several are coming. Can I jump in? 
Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Kang Mo from uh, Korea. I was a CTO at Corbett, but I left now. Uh, left Corbett now, and I'm running on a non-profit organization called Give People the Power, which empowers each individual by minimizing unnecessary high fees paid to financial institutions. Uh, my view viewpoint uh, about the centralized exchange and decentralized exchange is currently centralized exchanges are used more because it is first, it is uh, fast and easy to use. And two, um, many governments uh, think that, okay, we can, uh, rate, uh, we can um, uh, do KYC AML uh, on the uh, exchange customers. So governments think it is okay. But uh, whether uh, decentralized uh, exchanges are allowed or not, it's not um, something allowed by government uh, uh, or uh, something uh, allowed by some country. But decentralized exchanges can be built by anybody, meaning uh, whenever uh, I meet someone uh, in person and I can exchange my fiat currency into Bitcoin uh, without um, any regulation. So decentralized exchange means uh, if you have your coin, uh, you can exchange your coin into another coin um, without, uh, without uh, having central server. So uh, nobody can shut down the uh, decentralized exchange. So my viewpoint is it is very hard to uh, shut down decentral decentralized exchange and regulate uh, exchanging uh, currencies between individuals. That's my viewpoint. I, I'm, I'm going to add to that. Uh, so my name is Samson Lee. I'm uh, the founder and CEO of Constreet. Uh, we are the ecosystem enabler helping companies to be successful in the blockchain area. So our service starting with uh, ICO advisory from uh, white paper to public sell, public sell. We also offer a white label exchange um, focusing on the, our platform is focusing on the traditional brokerage firm. Because uh, we think uh, there's crypto guys doing crypto exchange in their traditional brokerage firm and we will merge. So our solution is more focused on the brokerage firm, uh, help them to do crypto exchange in the future. Uh, we also operate two funds, uh, one in Singapore, one in Hong Kong, uh, under regulation of MAS and HKMA. Um, so I totally agree that uh, regulation will be coming in uh, more and more for the exchange, because um, mainly because the government need to really protect the small investor. Right? Um, some of you might have uh, read the news uh, about China yesterday. There's another big ban of um, ICO service in, in China, which is expectable, right? But reason being is, is that there's one coin is called ARTS, so it's ICO listed, and, and the coin fell from 66 cents to 13 cents in the first day of ICO. So there's a lot of investor, angry investor in China, so they're coming out and protest. So the government really need to do something to protect the smaller investor, right? And I think now, very effectively, what they do, although without the regulation is coming, but before the regulation, now they really have a very strong, uh, very strong control on the fiat to coin uh, control. Right. So you you're doing just coin to coin, it's okay. You know you can play. It, uh, it's a wonderland. But as long as you touch the fiat, money going in, money coming out. It's a strong control. A lot of the exchange, even the bank account got shut down, um, so people cannot take the money out. So I think um, the, the, the regulation definitely is coming, and, and actually it will be good for the market because it helps to provide a more healthy environment. Yeah, that's a good point that uh, sometimes uh, banks just close accounts for exchange, and uh, uh, clients can withdraw cash Right, and what what is the option for exchange if uh, banks just closed account? What exchange shall do? Is there a kind of uh, safe haven f f for exchanges with uh, banks ready to open accounts? Hi, my, myself is Akash Agarwal. I'm the founder and president of Global DCX. We are I mean, an exchange focusing on emerging markets. I'll add to it like 
The bank's main worry is KYC and AML. As an exchange, you should be having a separate department for your KYC and AML and having the right experts on it. You should be sharing your data with the bank, which give them the comfortability that we are following KYC and AML and it's up to the path as per the regulators. And that's, that will give a lot of confidence to the regulators, to the banks, to the payment providers, payment gateways, everybody. Yeah, uh, the, so let's discuss this transparency of exchanges for tax authorities and so, so on. So what is the trend? How many exchanges are now reporting to tax authorities and uh, other regulators? Yeah, please. Well, so, so I, I wanted to add because even if exchanges do KYC, AML, banks will not extend banking services to you. Absolutely. Right? So, we are a regulated exchange in Japan. We have one of the best KYC, AML, um, and also we do 100% cold wallet. So we're, we're proven, at least from outside hacks, we are safe, right? I, I mean, other discussions around internal compliance governance, putting that aside. We have zero banks in Singapore, right? So it's not about KYC, AML, and as you mentioned, banks, for industries that they're not comfortable with, they'll close your account, they will close our customer's account as well. So it's not only the banks, um, our, our account, our larger customers' accounts will be shut down. That's why when you look at exchanges right now, most the most recent ones are all crypto-only exchanges. But the government is going to deem crypto as fiat as well. So they'll start tracking and cracking down crypto-only exchanges as well. So it's, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Why is that? And, if I, yeah. Yeah, and if, if I may add to that, it's actually absolutely true. Uh, because we, we've uh, been considering ourselves as a self-regulated exchange from the day one. And we actually uh, eventually acquired the uh, bank compliance team from one of the uh, largest international banks. Uh, do you hear as well? Well, we should speak louder, make mics louder. Do you hear us? No? Louder, please. Our microphone at maximum. I don't hear me. Uh, we yeah. need more power. We should yeah, kind of sure, speak. No worries. Oh, and, now it's bad. And um, yeah, we, we have very sophisticated KYC and AML. And more uh, on top of that, we passed the independent compliance audit every single year. And to be honest, it doesn't help much with banking. At, like, really doesn't help much. And uh, the other point is it's not, it's not regulators, actually, who pressure banks uh, in order not to work with crypto. Because, uh, like, as, as I said, we are talking to a lot of regulators across Europe, specifically. And uh, we even starting an initiative uh, in the UK in order to work with FCA to pressure banks uh, for them to work with the legitimate business, legitimate crypto businesses in the UK. So I think f as for, for now, for us uh, as a relatively big exchange, banking and uh, keeping up with the demand is uh, like two biggest problems right now. So why banks close accounts? It's actually, What's up? Yeah, it, 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 like to be quite clear here, uh, like most of the liquidity when it comes to exchanging with fiat uh, goes from the US dollars, right? And uh, it's actually a pressure from the US banks on the European and Asian banks because every single dollar uh, transferred from one account to the other account, even within one country, goes through the correspondence bank in, in the US. And, and it's correspondence banks who are pressuring the smaller banks in, in, in Europe or wherever in the world. They just don't want to deal with crypto, basically. Uh, why not exchange that use euro? Why do they use we dollars do. then? Yeah, we, we do. We, we actually kind of a fiat friendly exchange. So we have euros, we have sterlings, we have dollars, we have rubles. Uh, but yeah, still the most of the liquidity is in US dollars. Yeah, so if you, you use euro, you don't have problems with euro banks? Is, euro is better, okay. way better. Uh, how about I, I describe recent changes in Korean um, cryptocurrency market? 
um, in terms of uh, our government trying to reduce the amount of fund poured into cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, before uh, January 30, uh, any investor in crypto, any cryptocurrency investors in cryptocurrency exchanges could put money from any bank account. It was possible. Very interesting. So in Korea, we had a 40% premium comparing to global price. Uh, it was uh, uh, very high, so government was a little bit intimidated. So, uh, what they did was uh, allowing only uh, allowing customers to transfer their money only from his account, his or her account, from the uh, cryptocurrency bank account. So now I can only use my bank account to deposit my Korean won into cryptocurrency exchange. That is uh, understandable for KYC AML purpose. But uh, Korean government uh, went one step further. Hey, if you want to deposit your Korean won, you have to use exactly the same bank, bank account with the, the uh, exchange corporate bank account. It's, um, I think uh, it doesn't make sense. Looks like they want to reduce the amount of money poured into the uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. So after that event, um, in Korea, we, are seeing minus, we have seen minus 5 to minus 10% premium huge, huge drop uh, in terms of a premium. So at this point, I think we are having almost a zero premium right now, uh, but uh, definitely Korean people are having problem um, depositing Korean won into cryptocurrency exchanges. So uh, one more thing, uh, one more last thing is, uh, uh, you know, uh, I am a co-founder of Corbis, so I wanted to uh, deposit my Korean won into the company I co-founded, but I couldn't because uh, the, Kore the uh, Korean exchange is using Shinhan Bank and I didn't have a Shinhan Bank account. So I went to a bank and, hey, I want to create a new bank account. And they said, oh, no, you can't because you uh, created a bank account within uh, recent 20 days. Oh, oh then uh, can, I, can I come back and create a bank account? Okay, you come later. But you still have a $1,000 limit uh, per, per day, per day. So to increase that limit, you have to wait for three months. And you have to provide your, um, your proof of, a, um, proof of a, uh, income into the uh, bank account. And you have to wait for three months. That is um, reducing uh, amount of money poured into exchange. And I believe that uh, last year, Korea was leading the cryptocurrency market uh, by the 40% uh, premium, huge uh, demand. But right now, we, our demand uh, decreased quite much. So uh, a recent, uh, recent drop of the cryptocurrency market could be related to uh, Korean government's uh, decision. Well, and uh, I think the regulation uh, for the exchange will be coming in from two directions. Right. First will be from the um, the monetary authority, like MAS here, and in Hong Kong it's HAMA, and then also from the Security Commission, right? Because now what we talk about the AML, um, all these KYC is, is more from the MA, the monetary authority, right? They concern about where the money is coming in, and the cash flow, but now more and more we see um, regulation from the from the security exchange. Right. In U.S., they literally go into a lot of exchange to take down a lot of tokens, which they consider security tokens. Right? Even after they list, they take it down. And, and also, um, for example, what happened in China, so I think the security exchange will really go into the, to the, to, um, the regulate exchange of the requirement what token can be listed right? and what cannot be listed, because right? this is the bottleneck and how they safeguard the investor. It's just like stock exchange, right? So um, now the exchange, I think they also need to be self-regulated, right, before the regulation come out, because a lot of the exchange, um, they're really very commercial driven, right? They will list any coins just to pay money. They ask for a lot of money, right? So now we see the industry, before from people making money from the mining, now people making money from the exchange, from the, uh, from the listing, it's ridiculous. Some of them charge like a million dollars yeah. just to list a coin. And, and, but I think commercial is, is reasonable, it's okay. But apart from that, I think the exchange also need to be self-regulated.
to really just to focus on, on listing a, a good, good um, token. So, and I just wanted to add yeah. is self-regulation will not be enough. Mm -hmm. Right, for example, there was an incident in Japan two weeks ago where 500 million worth of NEM was stolen. They were supposedly self-regulating, right? So they can say some, one thing to the regulator, but they can do something different. So that's why um, the Japan, Japanese government and the governments will start saying you need an independent third party auditor. When you look at Tether, they need an auditor to make sure that they have one-to-one. -one. So self-regulation in itself will not be enough. And, and as you mentioned, it's not only two government parties c coming to get you, there's tax authorities who are interested, They're, they are the police and all these people are coming in as well. So, so the, the cryptocurrency exchanges is going to be leading the regulatory and how the crypto market will evolve. Because if something happens with ICOs, for example in Japan, the government will come and get us. That's why it's actually okay for exchanges to ask for a registration fee that might be, I don't think it's high if it's half a million or 200,000, because what's going to happen is regulators are going to come and get us, right? So from that perspective, it's actually our responsibility to charge these amount so that we can do independent study. If something happens, we delist it. So all these things we have to do, and also we need to work with auditors who check and balance. So that's how I look at it. I would like to add some uh, words on this. So I'm from 10X, co-founder and CEO. My name is Toby. Um, we're not an exchange, but I see myself on this panel similar uh, as the others as enablers of our ecosystem. So what we do is we allow you to spend cryptocurrencies using a, a real-world card. And I think we're talking a lot about the limitations that are on our ecosystem that are coming in terms of regulation, how we have to, to deal with banks. And I want to add my thoughts on um, how decentralized exchanges go into this. So right now, um, I think most people think in terms of decentralized exchanges simply as solving some of the problems that are still there, which I don't actually think are problems. Like you mentioned um, the security problems with uh, CoinCheck. Um, these things are, these are traditional problems of security. Banks have figured them out. Um, so exchanges as well as um, our solution, we just continue to improve. And um, what I think that decentralized exchanges actually can cater to are the limitations that are imposed on us on actually delivering new products. So when you talk about you don't list ICO tokens, um, there is a reason for that. You, you can't go that direction. Um, so for me, the passion going into crypto, into blockchain, was always the long tail of innovation that can come out of that. It's like when you go traditional finance and you ask your bank to do something, they will only ever do that if that use case is really, really big, if there is another million users that want the same. And crypto and blockchain can, can do that in another way, because all you need is five guys somewhere come up with an idea and, and just build it. And that got me a passion in the beginning. And then the question is, where do decentralized exchanges come in? In my opinion, where they can really win is in the long tail of liquidity, is when, uh, when you cannot be listed anymore, or when your token only has five people, or when you're building something completely abstruse for a group somewhere else. And I think that's where, where it's going to get interesting. <coughs> like When we focus on the competition between decentralized exchanges and uh, centralized exchanges, they're not going to win simply because they might be better in security or, or something. They, they will only win when we find completely new use cases. Um, and like that, I would say our job here um, is really to be the enablers for that ecosystem, for exchanges to be um, the entry the, for us being uh, one of the exits of being able to really spend your crypto so you can stay in this ecosystem, so you can use the innovation that is coming. And I think we haven't seen much of that yet. Thank you. Oh, now we have timer. <laughs> we will be in time this time. So I just, I think we will uh, be able to take one question. Who wants to ask this? Yes, please. Hi, um, I'm new to this, so bear with my question, but I'm very curious about what you think it will take for the big institutional investors to move into this space other than regulation. Um, that's part one of the question. I mean, obviously it's gone fairly mainstream with retail investors, but I think 
when big institutions, BlackRock has recently still said cryptocurrencies are not an investable asset. So I, the first part of the question is, what will it take in this ecosystem for the big institutional investors to actually move in? And number two is, um, do you think governments will start to issue their own you know, cryptocurrencies? I'll start out again. Um, so institutional investors are already starting to come in. Right? It started out from individuals, family offices, larger funds, hedge funds. They're all coming in. I get a lot of inquiries. The single, there's many things they're concerned of. Um, but the single biggest thing is um, around custodial services, right? Are their assets going to be safe? Is it segregated? Is there a trust bank? Is there insurance? Um, other than the regulation side, as you mentioned, that custody side is something that's extremely important to them. And being able to get money in, money out in an efficient um, way. So that's, 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 I think, the single biggest thing, other than they're concerned about price manipulation, liquidity, all these things, right? So. So that's the first question, if, and if, if anyone else wants to add yeah, in. Yeah, sure. So I just want to support that because we originally positioned ourselves as the retailish exchange. And for the last uh, six to eight months, I would say, uh, we see a lot of interest from the institutional investors also. So uh, kind of custodial services is a big issue. We, we have to pass through the proper due diligence from their, from, from their side in order to them to trade on our platform. Uh, we had a lot of meetings with like very old school institutional funds that are interested uh, in this space. So I think uh, when the uh, regulation comes, we'll see more and more institutional investors coming to the space. And for your question about the government coin, the sovereignty coin, actually in China, while wow, they're also banning the ICO, the government's very aggressive, rolling our official uh, rent, the, the China um, digital money, right? Because the way they see it is the new generation, the younger millenniums in the future is all using a wallet. So they want in the wallet is really a share of wallet in the future when they open a, a digital wallet, there will be digital yuan in there. So, so I think uh, when they're taking a lead, I think many other government is thinking about the same. Yeah. yeah, so the last question is we have 40 seconds. Sorry. Uh, what's your main client? What's your, um, who is your main client? With the small people with the small checks or I don't know, people who trade with a lot of uh, big amounts of money? So, so what was the yeah. Yeah, I can go again. I, yeah, I can. It, it, it changed over time. Yeah. In the beginning, it was the early adopters. Um, they were ideology driven, and and then it was also a lot of retail customers. Now there's there's and you, you need to look at it from a your customer base or transaction volume base. When you look at transaction volume base, there's a lot of these hedge funds and um, professional traders and smaller family offices that are coming in. While when you look at the user base. Uh, it, it also has changed where there's a vast majority of younger generation um, that are coming in. And to them, cryptocurrency is more familiar than equities or bonds or any other asset classes. I think uh, this is the trend, not just with, with your exchange, but basically in the industry. So we see a lot of interest coming from the uh, retail investors, like willing to invest like 500, thousand bucks uh, into crypto but we also see rise of the interest from the uh, institutional investors and um, family offices and guys with the bigger checks so yeah it's it's kind of both of the segments are growing um, and the trend is obviously towards uh, higher checks right now Thank well, you. I want to uh, use an example uh, back in the dot coms right if, if you remember Back in the dot coms, year 2000, when you open a newspaper, every day, somewhere in the headlines on the front page, it will tell you how many internet users in US, how many internet users in Japan and China. But that's silly, because one day we know everybody will be internet users. Now we talk about crypto cloud, you know, all this crypto community. 
But eventually, one day, it's a portfolio investment. All of us are investors. We will have stock, we will have bonds, we will have forex, and we will have crypto. It's a portfolio management, uh, I think. So eventually, everybody invest will be a customer of crypt, crypt, um, crypto. Yeah, so crypto exchanges are driving penetration of crypto into credit cards, payments, exchange to other crypto, and hopefully to other assets classes. That's what Latokin is doing.